Welcome everybody to the doctor's office. I'm the American Scotch Doctor, Dr. Dave. The Scotch Doctor is no expert. And the last thing that I want is for people to think that I'm trying to be an expert on the subject. I just so happen to really like matured spirits. Sounds pretty weird. But matured spirits, and I spend an ungodly amount of time researching it and studying it. So if I say anything wrong, or if I do something that is not correct, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'm open for criticism. That's what this should be about. It's not just supposed to be this, I'm right, you're wrong. It's all personal opinion. Today, I'm gonna to be reviewing, tasting the Glenn Farkless 10-year-old. I recently reviewed the 12-year-old. After this video is done, if you haven't checked out the 12-year review, feel free to check that out. I'll put a little card up at the top, you can click that. What I'm gonna be doing in this video is letting you know how I feel about this whiskey overall. Now make sure that you stick around because I'm gonna be discussing how Glenn Farkless is quite a transparent company, but I wanna talk about how not only Glenn Farkless, but how other distilleries could be more transparent. Stick with me, we're about to get into the Glenn Farkless 10. Now, Glenn Farkless is a whiskey within the Speyside region. If you watch my regions video, you'd know that technically they put on the bottle that it's a Highland single malt, uh, even though it resides within Speyside. Anything that is Speyside technically is a Highland malt, but there's just these regions that define certain characters, or so they say. The 10-year-old version is 40% alcohol by volume. It is a natural color, states it right on the bottle. It does not state anything about their filtration method. Uh, however, a lot of different sources will say that they do not chill filter their whiskey. I can't confirm or deny that. Their website doesn't say it, the bottle doesn't say it, so therefore I'm gonna have to assume they chill filter it or that there's heavy filtration going through. It's really nice to see that Glenn Farkless is independently owned and has been since the 1830s by the same Grant family. They expect as well that the Grants are gonna to continue to own it. They aren't saying a name yet because the kids are not old enough to drink. They're not putting them on that yet. But generally, out of the 120 some odd distilleries up and down, I'm not sure what the exact number is now, but roughly 100 or more of the distilleries within Scotland are owned by massive corporations like Diageo, Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy, several others. You see where I'm coming from here. So it's just nice to see things done a little bit more simplistically. And it's also really neat that Glen Farkless is the only distillery that I know of that direct fires both the wash and the spirit stills. I know a lot of the distilleries or some of them that direct fire only do their wash still, but Glenn Farkless is direct firing both the um, the wash and the spirit still, which is apparently a little bit more expensive, a little bit more maintenance because you're constantly having, there's just more wear and tear on the, the, the still at the end of the day. Get in the nose here. This is neat, no water added. The 10 year compared to the 12 year, right off the bat is so much more subdued it's so much more spirit driven. It's very malt driven. And I'm saying that it's the characteristics of the spirit itself, what came from the grains, it's still in here. It's not being completely hidden by really intense uh, sherry cast maturation. Don't get me wrong, there is still very serious sherry cast maturation going on in this, but it's much more subdued. This isn't a bottle that I would be nervous to give somebody that doesn't drink whiskey often. The 12 year, it's a great whiskey, but it takes a little bit more time to get used to or to be able to say, oh, I enjoy this. The nose on this is a little bit biscuity. Again, malty. There's a very distinctive sherry. I, I feel there's this slight pheno note to it, a drier sherry note to it. I can't find anywhere that tells me what casks were used for this. If anybody has any information on that, please let me know. I've done a lot of reading, a lot of research trying to find how many or what casks were used. And I know it's gonna vary differently somewhat batch by batch, but what I wanna see is the cask types that are used. Was this a Oloroso? Was this a Fino Sherry? Was this, you know, a Pedro Jimenez Sherry? 
Apparently, they use primarily uh, Oloroso casks for this. This is what I'm being told. But this is like random reading and people doing reviews and people visiting the distillery, but it's not the distiller or a manager there telling me these are the casks we're using. It's slightly floral, a little little fruity. There's more, there's more floral notes than sweet fruit notes going on currently on the nose. I want to go ahead. I want to show you what I thought of this on day one nosing. So fresh, very floral, raisin sweet, a really beautiful spirit scent. Fresh honey barley. Ooh, all right. Now I wanna go ahead and taste this neat, no water added. I'm really enjoying smelling this. A little rubbery on the nose, but a good, like a good rubbery. I mean, there's times where I like, I don't mind the smell of rubber. Mm. That's real good. It's nippy. Spicy. Spicy oak notes. Likely from the Oloroso sherry cask or the, the sherry casks. A lot of sherry casks are going to have European oak or a Spanish oak. But don't be fooled. Oftentimes there as well could be American oak used for sherry. There's Sherry does not have to be matured using European oak. I want to go ahead and add some water to this. I'm really enjoying it, but it's got this little bit of a spice note that I don't really need. One, two, three, four, four. Just a few drops does not add much to this, but I am so much happier to add less and to need to add more later. And I've practiced with this bottle quite a bit. And I say practice, I mean I have practiced on the field and practice. I'm telling you what, we're going to win this game. We practice so, so hard. Oh, boy. All the competition is going to be disintegrated. But long and short of it, I've learned that this whiskey just does not need a whole lot of water. You add too much, it's going to be gone. It's only a 40% ABV. This is the type of bottle that is really for people that, you know, it's an entry level bottle, as I said in the Regions video. Uh, that's just what it is. It's supposed to introduce people to the Glen Farkless line. Um, Personally, after trying this bottle in the 12 year, I am so excited to make Glen Farkless my little treat here and there when I can find another bottle, um, you know, something besides the 10 or the 12, just to keep on trying different bottles. All right, let's see what the nose is doing here. Wait, let's show you what I thought tasting this glass on day one. Ooh, all right. It definitely has a young, rough character to it. It's not impressing me a ton. It's not very complex and rich. It's very spirit dominated. Okay, now that you've seen that, let's see what this nose is like with a little bit of water added. More oak notes coming through. A little less floral, a little more vanilla sweet. Am I getting a little nutmeg here? I think so. Just a little bit of nutmeg. It's really nice, really nice. There's not a lot going on. It's not super expressive, but what it does have going on, it's nice. Let's see if I have a video of what this smelt like day one with a little water. Two drops, very sweet, sweet floral. I think not only the couple drops of water, but also the you know, almost 10 minutes sitting has allowed this to open up quite a bit more. Almost cooking wine smell. I like it better with the water and the little bit of time opening up. A little funky, but man, still really good. I like you. I've had this bottle for at least a couple months now, at least two or three months now sitting. So 
it's had some time to open up. It has slowly went down here. More syrupy. The spice has subsided and is turning into this sweet and spicy. Almost like a sweet and sour type thing going on here. Yeah, that spicy nip that I was talking about, that European oak, it's still there, but I like how this is just a little bit less grabby, less in my face right now with tingly alcohol, spicy bite. It's real good. This is real good. So easy to drink. This is a glass that I could give to a friend and expect that even if they don't like scotch normally, they could enjoy this. That's where I'm at on this, even first, first pour from the bottle. So what would the American Scotch doctor, Dr. Dave, give this as a script score? I'm going to go ahead and give this an... Can I not? I don't want to give a number. I'm going to do Fs. I'm going to give F pluses too. I'm going to allow those. I'm going to do from F all the way up to A plus. Because I feel like that's a simpler scale for right now. I might change it up. If you knew the American Scotch Doctor, you'd know that tomorrow I'm going to do something different. And the next day I'm going to be crazy. And the next day I might not show up. But the next day, yeah, I'm going to be there. Um, this easily gets a B.5. <laughs> like a B. Yeah, I want to start giving minuses. This gets a, a B. A B point. A B point five two. <laughs> I, don't, I wanted to get away from the numbers. I just like the the variance of being able to go from from zero to a hundred, and I I've, I've never rated anything over ninety one. Never rated anything over ninety one that I've ever purchased, and I've bought. I have tried roughly three hundred different Scotch whiskeys, and I have not rated one over ninety one. So my scale is going to be a little bit different than everybody else's. I'm not consistent with scores. I don't know. And it's hard, too, because here's the thing. I'm such a noob. I am such a noob when it comes to reviewing and actually giving people scores. It was real cozy when I would sit in my house or up in this room, and I'd drink the whiskey, and I'd write, 86 out of 100. That's great. And I'd close my book, and I could walk away. But now when I give a score, I have to go, was that the right score? Next week, is that going to be the score I wanted to give now? So... I think I'm going to give a variance. I think that's what I want to do. I'm going to say, depending on the day, depending on who you are, this bottle is going to be, for me, anywhere between 84 and 86 out of 100. Depending on what the situation is, depending on when I opened it. Um, right now, it's delicious. The day I opened it, Man, I don't even remember. I'm excited to see that video. I've actually got some of that information sent, put in this video. Yeah, 84 to 86, somewhere around there. I mean, that's it's a solid score. It's a really good whiskey for the price. I don't buy a whole lot of whiskeys repetitively. Let's say I like this 10-year. I, I may not buy a Glen Farkless 10 for five years. I hope I get to try it again. But there are so many kinds of whiskeys, and I don't want it. I don't want that to make it sound like I don't like this. I just, I got to try it, and before I did whiskey reviews, I basically every bottle I bought was something different, and I think that's something that I want you all to take away from this video as well. Is that don't be discouraged by a specific bottle. I bought some bottles that I completely hated and then came back to later, two, three, four months later after it sat down and completely loved it and changed my song and dance. Like the Quinta Rubin 12, the 14 was real quick for me to enjoy. But I bought a bottle of Quinta Rubin 12 back about four, uh, five years ago, and I absolutely hated it. Sat it up in the cupboard, came back several months later, enjoyed every sip of it. Did it again. I was like, what was up with that bottle? Bought another bottle of it. Did not like that glass. Did it again. Let it sit for several months up in the cabinet. 
or let it make sure that I'd let it sit in the glass, loved it. So make sure that you're really patient with your whiskey. Make sure that you're not overly picky with choosing the same brand. Because again, 80, 90%, 90% of these Scotch whiskeys are owned by massive companies. So what you gotta look for is people pulling wool over your eyes, making you think that a expensive whiskey is a better whiskey, or an older whiskey is a better whiskey. Many times it can be the case. But again, look for the alcohol percentage. If you're buying an older whiskey, if you're paying a lot of money for your whiskey and it's under 46% alcohol by volume, if it is not natural color, those are two things that I am really discouraged by when I go to buy a whiskey. So if you can see natural color, if you see 46% or greater alcohol by volume, those are two keys to go, maybe I should try that whiskey. And then once you buy it, you know, and it doesn't hurt to do your research before you buy these bottles. Because again, I mean, this is some big money that you're putting out and you might have these bottles for months like I do. So you don't want to have a bottle up in your cabinet that you go, I don't really like that. It's going to happen. It is going to happen. I'm sure it's happened to many of you. If it hasn't happened, don't worry. Put the cabinet, put it back up in the cabinet. Come back to it later. It may be a bad whiskey. That's fine. Um, maybe you could use that for mixers. Like, I don't make mixers myself generally. My wife likes them. And sometimes I'll make a whiskey. Or like, what are they, gin? Uh, that's a, Tom Collins is, is a gin drink. But that's a really good drink. If you haven't had a Tom Collins and a, with a nice gin, go for it. So, in my next video, I'm going to be either reviewing Isla or the Highlands. I'm waiting on more votes. Right now, it is a neck and neck tie. We have a crazy neck and neck tie. We have two votes for Isla and two votes for the Highlands. Now, I'm considering allowing the one person who said Isla, Isla to be considered as two votes. What do you think? I'm not going to do that. I'm sorry. That, I won't do that. I promise. I said it was going to be a fair vote. But hey, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate that you made it this far within the video. If you know of anybody that would enjoy this type of content or if you think this has been helpful, feel free to send it over to a friend that you think would enjoy it. I don't want you to just send this to people that don't care. Send it to somebody that you really think could use this. But most of all, thanks for being you. I hope you have a great day. I hope you're having a decent week if you're not. Feel free to reach out to me. My email's in the about section and my channel. I'm not here just to share whiskey. I'm here to share knowledge. I'm here to share passion. I'm here to share love. I'm here to share happy moments with all of you. Cheers, everyone. Slan jeva. To your good health. Appreciate all you. It's a really good glass. It's, it's very... It's elegant. This is a glass that... I would want to drink at a wedding and I would feel like I'm really fitting in. Like, grooving a little bit. Maybe a little grooving. Maybe a little bit.